Welcome to today's webinar from SOAS University of London. My name is Alicia Sales. I am the Scholarships Deputy Manager at SOAS. And here with me is Ricky Clark, FIS Deputy Manager. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's webinar is FIS, Scholarships and Funding Information for Postgraduate Studies. Before we start, just to say that today's presentation will be available on the SOAS website after this webinar and will be emailed to those who have registered. Also, if you have any general questions, we will be answering some of them live at the end of the webinar. If you cannot attend the webinar live or if you have specific questions, you can also email your queries to scholarships at SOAS dot ac dot uk and we will reply to you after the presentation at the end of the webinar we will have between 15 to 20 minutes to answer questions during this session during this session we are going to cover scholarship funding then we will talk about the most important aspects you need to consider when making an application for a scholarship at soas We will look at candidate criteria, candidate assessment, application deadlines and notification of results, and finally, how to apply. Scholarship information is normally published annually in November on the scholarship web pages, www.soas.ac.uk forward scholarships. Once you have chosen your degree course, you should research sources of funding. We advise you to make applications for scholarships as early as possible. SOAS offers a wide range of scholarships aimed at assisting deserving students with their studies. These scholarships are unique to SOAS. Unlike loans, you don't need to pay them back. There are two types of scholarships you may be eligible for, SOAS scholarships and external scholarships. Detailed information of these scholarships is available on the scholarship web website. External scholarships are those funded by the government, organizations or charities with an invested interest in higher education. For example, Non-UK students can apply for funding from the UK government through Shifting Awards and Commonwealth Scholarships. These external awards are not administered by us, so you will need to contact the external organisation directly for further details and application procedures. SOAS scholarships are provided by SOAS, for example, the Phyllis the Felix Scholarships. You can apply for all scholarships for which you might be eligible, both SOAS scholarships and external scholarships. In fact, we strongly advise you to apply for as many scholarships as you can to increase your chances of gaining funding. Unless specified otherwise, you will need to complete a separate scholarship application form for each scholarship. Eligibility criteria depends upon various factors and is different from award to award. You will know if you are eligible to apply for a scholarship by reading the details on the candidate criteria found on the website. It is important that you apply early and read the guidelines thoroughly in order to have the best chances of success. I will now go through some of these key factors. This is not an exhaustive list, and you will need to read carefully the scholarship pages for full details on eligibility. Excellent academic record. Applicants are expected to have an outstanding academic record, and scholarships are awarded to the best candidates. 
applicants must normally hold a good honours degree with a first or a 2-1. For research scholarships, they must possess a good merit or distinction at a master's level. Some scholarships may give preference to those with a first class or distinction. Others may give some consideration to financial need. In this case, this will be specified clearly on the relevant scholarship pages. Residency, citizenship and fee status. Eligibility may depend on residency, that is the place where you normally live. It may depend on citizenship of a country if the scholarship in question is targeted at the students from specific regions. Scholarships may also be based on fee status assessment if the scholarship is specific to those paying home or overseas fees. Some scholarships are subject or program specific, so you will also need to check if your program of study is the scholarship you are interested in. In, mo in most cases, SOAS scholarships are only open to students who have already accepted onto a program by the scholarship deadline. However, you don't need to wait for the outcome of your admission application before applying for the scholarships. Most of our scholarships require that you meet the English language condition by the 1st of June. So please arrange your English test and ensure you meet the English requirements as soon as possible. In addition to this, you will be required to meet all the conditions of your offer before the start of the program. Decisions on scholarships are normally made by a panel of SOAS academics. I will now talk briefly about some key things you need to get right to make a competitive application for for a scholarship at SOAS. So, what is the key information for application success? Firstly, your academic record or predicted grades. Most of the scholarships are based on academic merit. We are looking for well-qualified and committed applicants. When assessing applications, we will your academic record most particularly your most recent results. We will consider evidence of outstanding academic achievement as indicated by degree outcome, prizes and awards, etc. Your references are also important. We look at what the references have to say about you, including your academic abilities, your core knowledge and your determination. Other key areas are your potential to go further, to grow and excel in your program of study. Another key aspect is your personal statement. This is your opportunity to tell us why you are interested in the subject and why you want to study at SOAS. In your statement, we are looking for genuine subject interest and a strong fit between your application and program of study. We will consider your previous training, additional preparation and commitment to undertaking the proposed course of study. For instance, we will look at your relevant work experience, additional language studies, fieldwork travel, etc. It is critical that you read the specific candidate criteria carefully for each scholarship and that you provide evidence in the statement on how you meet the scholarship requirements. Scholarship information is published annually in November. Our deadlines are normally January and February. However, some scholarships close on different dates. To avoid missing key deadlines, it is therefore crucial that you check individual scholarship pages and know the closing dates in your calendar. In order to be eligible for a SOAS scholarship, you must also apply for your program of study, ideally six weeks before the deadline. Successful candidates will be notified of the course 
of the outcome of their application by July. In order to apply for scholarships, you must follow two steps. Step one, apply for your program ideally six weeks before the scholarship deadline. You must submit a complete online admission application. A complete application for admission includes official transcripts, copies of degree certificates, an explanation of the grading system for any degrees obtained outside of the UK, two references, a CV and a personal statement. In addition to this, MPhil PhD applicants must also submit a research proposal. Applicants must normally have an offer of admission by the scholarship application deadline. The panel will be considering your scholarship application together with your online application for admission. Finally, step two. You must apply for the scholarship via the online application form by the scholarship deadline. This brings us to the end of the presentation. We have now got 15 to 20 minutes for general questions. And we will reply to any specific inquiries after the webinar. So let's have a look at the questions we have received. Our first question is from B. Saitea, who's asking about scholarships that give a full fee, uh, I guess a full tuition fee waiver. And if I may, I can say that this is quite variable. So we have around 60 to 65 different scholarships. They each have different criteria as outlined. Um, so you would need to look at them individually. Some of them do give a, an amount of money which will cover both tuition fees and money towards living, whereas others are a set amount of money. So it depends on the degree you apply for or the tuition fee amount. So it might not cover the full tuition fee. It does get more complicated, so please do look at each of the individual scholarships that you think you're eligible for to see how much you could get both towards fees and towards living costs. Our second question is asking about details of needs-based um, scholarships for Indian nationals which cover living expenses. Um, I mean, most of our scholarships are based uh, on academic merit. Um, there are a few that will consider a financial need. So for Indian scholars or applicants, we have, for example, uh, the Felix Scholarships, um, which is a fully funded scholarships. Um, obviously, um, we have a list of uh, scholarships on the scholarship website, um, I would advise you to check the list in first instance, um, look at um, the eligibility criteria, and then if you have any specific questions, then you can, of course, contact us by emailing scholarships at soas.ac.uk. Of course, I will be happy then to give you specific information for you. Um, Devi has a question, is it okay if I apply to the department at SOAS a week before the Felix Scholarship deadline, would it be a problem? Um, as, as Lithia said, ideally you should apply six weeks before, but if you only learn of it at the moment, then do apply before the scholarship deadline. If you don't apply at all, then obviously you won't be considered. However, some of our scholarships are very competitive. Um, if there's a complete application of admission and a number of them, then it's possible you might not be considered by the selection panel. I think, I mean, if, um, if you haven't submitted the admission application yet, do that as soon as possible, um, because um, if you have an offer of admission by the time um, the selection takes place, then uh, we will be able to put your application forward if you meet the other criteria. Ardra asks, how are there two ways to apply different from each other in outcome? 
Um, I think that's referring to the two steps that Alithia outlined. So the first step is to apply for admissions to the admissions office to the degree that you want to study. And the second step is to apply on the application form. Um, and the two go hand in hand. The selection process looks at your admission application and your scholarship application together before making a decision. The scholarship application is a very small um, online form and it captures information and evidence that we need for the scholarship, particular to each individual scholarship, which might not be captured by the admissions form. Amanda has asked um, regarding advice on funding for disabilities, and there is for UK citizens and EU citizens, I believe, a disabled student allowance, which is administered through our student advice and wellbeing team. So it's not a scholarship per se, but it is um, additional funding for uh, students who need access to education. So definitely check out the SOAS website um, with student advice and wellbeing, and you can search using DSL, Disabled Students Allowance. And in addition to this, obviously, you can apply for any of the scholarships uh, listed on the scholarship website, which are based on academic merit, yeah. Irrespective of ability or disability. Um, there is a question from Clara regarding the SOAS research studentships. Um, um, basically, um, the SOAS research studentships will be available from 1920. Um, up to date, up to date information will be posted on the website um, at the end of January, um, with the, with up to date information on deadlines, criteria, and application deadlines. So please do have a look again um, on the scholarship website at the end of January. This has been confirmed as available for 1920. We have a follow-up question about the Felix application from Debbie. This says, um, how long do you get an application number? And that is your admissions reference number. So once you've submitted your application through the admission system, and you should get an acknowledgement uh, which will give you your application number and that's the one to use. How long it takes, it shouldn't take too long, uh, but if you do want to know more about how to apply directly for the admissions to degrees, there will be another webinar next week for postgraduate admissions. We've got a question from Ahmed about scholarships available for students from Egypt, and that is probably best answered by looking at <clears throat> the list of scholarships online. Uh, we do have both a general web page and then specific web pages for masters, undergraduate and research level scholarships. And within those pages, there is a column that indicates any residency or nationality requirements. And so that will include either saying Egypt, for example, specifically, or it might say Africa, or it might say um, developed countries. Um, and if it's something more general or ambiguous, such as developed countries, then clicking into the scholarship itself will give a breakdown of which scholarships qualify or how you work out whether your country is eligible. We have some questions specific about specific scholarships, such as the SOAS Impact Scholarship, so please do email us directly at scholarships at SOAS. Um, and a question about funding for mothers with children. So again, the scholarships are on academic merit, so it's e they're equally available to parents and non-parents, mothers and fathers. But you can also, once you are here as a student, there are some childcare funds through Student Advice and Wellbeing. Student Advice and Wellbeing is there to give additional support to anyone who has additional costs or barriers to study. So they give study support skills, counselling, but also some small funds which are not scholarships but do support 
students with particular needs? Um, I have a question from T. Muranda. Please, may you give an indication of living cost and accommodation cost for 1920? Um, um, as a rough guide of the cost of living in the UK, we would say that the minimum would be around £1,000 um, per month. Um, you know, some, I mean, there is a breakdown on the living uh, cost in the UK on the website. But just to give you an idea, uh, for example, accommodation um, could, could cost around £590. Then um, another type of cost, for example, food, it will be between 230 and 275 um, Laundry between 15 and 18 pounds. Um, travel cost um, is between 50 and 110. For example, books between 35 and 55 pounds per month. And um, pe for personal expenses, you could um, roughly estimate between 20 and 35 pounds. And for other miscellaneous costs between 40 and 70 pounds. Um, so but, uh, as an overall, we would um, calculate a minimum of 1,000 um, pounds, but depending on, on how, how much you want to spend in several aspects, then it could be more. And that is just a, a guide that's been given by our colleagues in student advice and wellbeing. And of course, as Alicia says, there's a range of amounts there, and it does really depend where in London you live, how far away from the SOAS campus, which will affect your travel costs, and how efficient you are at budgeting or making food last. So there's no set amount. But definitely, it's something worth working out and considering when when coming to study in London at SOAS or any other university. Um, the application number for your admissions, Yasmin is asking, come as you apply for admission. So your reference number will be given, I think, in an acknowledgement email or within the system as you apply for admissions. So you don't get that once you once you get an offer of a place. It is as you apply at the initial stage. Um, a good question from Fazana is scholarship assessment based on previous academic performance only. That's a sort of yes and no. If you've finished your first degree or your master's degree and you're applying for a PhD, then it will be looking at your graduated grades. But if you're in your final year or you're just completing your master's, for example, then it will also be subject to what your references are suggesting your predicted grades are. And that's where your transcript comes in so that your previous year's marks or for a master's, who's all, someone who's studying on their master's, their previous essay marks, we can see a projection of what you've already achieved during the year and what you're likely to achieve by the time you graduate in the summer. And then any offer of a scholarship will be um, conditional on achieving a first class degree or a master's degree with merit, depending on the level. Um, Jasmine is asking, um, I, I graduated over 10 years ago, will two professional reference be acceptable? Um, basically for the scholarship application, we don't require any additional supporting documents. Um, basically, we will be uh, using the information you've submitted with your admission application. So I would advise you to check with the admission team the sort of references they they accept when you apply for admissions. I think there is some frequently asked questions available um, on their on their website, um, and I think uh, they they have a section about references. So I would advise you to check that first. And if you have any further question or you require further advice, you can email masters admissions at soas.ac.uk and they will be happy to to advise you on references. 
Um, you, somebody's asked, can we make an appointment to see Student Advice Wellbeing on campus? Um, definitely, once you enrol as a student, you, that's, that is their function. They have drop-in sessions and appointments. If you're a prospective student, I think they'd also be happy to see you, but um, maybe email them or in advance just to make sure any particular um, specialist advisor for your requirement is available on the day you come in. Not all advisors are available on every day. Um, so we have a question from Farsana. Um, she wants to know whether experience will be taken into consideration as well. Um, yes, yeah, so basically um, academics will be looking at the grades because obviously scholarships are quite competitive. So the, one of the criteria will be academic, but obviously they will also be looking at other aspects um, such references or any relevant experience. So if you have relevant experience, it's important that you, you mention that as that will be also a, an, an, another um, criteria that the academics will be considering. EPI is asking, are there any scholarships available for part-time students? Um, there are some, there are more for full-time study, but there are some on the website. Um, so do have a careful look. And also, as well as the SOAS scholarships on the three web pages, there's a fourth web page in the scholarships area, which is for external funding providers. These are organizations, philanthropic charities, government organizations, and others. The application isn't through SOAS, so you need to check directly on those web pages for their own criteria, the deadlines, and application procedures. But there is a far wider range of different scholarships at different times of the year available externally to us. And Sean is asking, can we apply for several scholarships provided by SOAS? Absolutely. As long as you're eligible for all of them, you can apply for as many as you are eligible for. And that would be a sensible option. We do look at, when selection is made, applicants who've applied for more than one. And if you're successful for one, then of course, that means your application for others is not necessary and that gives somebody else another chance. But for you yourself, the best way forward is to apply for as many things as you're eligible for, as you don't know which ones you're gonna be successful for. Um, there is a, a question from Tim Muranda. Sh should we fail to raise funds from 1920? If we don't get a scholarship, is it possible to to defer the acceptance while we save. And yes, it is normally possible to defer your offer of admission. Um, in order to do that, you need to request it in writing. So you will need to write to the admission team and request that and they will get back to you. Um, um, there is a question from Yasmin. Um, this is the last question we have time for. Is a retired referee acceptable? Um, That's an interesting one. I think probably best to check at the postgraduate admissions webinar next week. So references are more about the admissions criteria. Um, I guess I don't want to give you false hope or <laughs> be disappointing, so I'm not sure. But as entirely. I said, there is a, a webinar um, that you can register and the admission team will be able to uh, to advise you on, on that. And also, as I mentioned before, there is um, a section on the website about frequently asked questions. And there is a section that gives information about refer um, references and what is acceptable. Um, so you can have a look at that uh, first and obviously register for the next webinar and admissions will be happy to, to advise you. And very quickly, yes, Maria, this webinar will be recorded and available uh, on the webinar page on the SOAS website. So thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. And um, I hope you found this webinar um, helpful. If you, as I mentioned before, if you have any additional questions, um, we, we, 
Uh, you can email us to scholarships at soas.ac.uk and we will be very happy to answer them. Thank you very much.